Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, once again, I want to say thank you for joining us on this Tuesday night uh, family and friends Bible study. Uh, we're here every Tuesday, uh, most Tuesdays, excuse me, at uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, listen, uh, while we're actually live on Facebook and YouTube, uh, we're actually uh, also c concurrently uh, host a group on Zoom. Uh, and that group, what we do is we continue the conversation well beyond when we finish up on the, the message on social media. And if that's something you want to be a part of, feel free to inbox us. We'll make sure to get you that information. Uh, but nevertheless, just want to say thank you for taking the time, uh, your precious time for joining us on this Tuesday. Uh, we've been at it for uh, pretty pretty good amount of time. Uh, this year, we have been focusing on partnering with God. Uh, and listen, uh, you know, there's there's this misconception. Uh, a lot of people have a very uh, poor self-image uh, where they find it hard to believe that God uh, wants to partner with them. You know, one of the things that I often uh, try to correct people on when I hear them say it, they'll say something like, well, I'm just you know, I'm just this. And, and in the process of announcing that I'm just what they're doing is, is that they're minimizing themselves. And what I want to tell you is that there's no such thing as I'm just because the reality is, is that God saw fit for you to be here. You are literally a solution uh, to a world problem. Uh, hence the necessity for you being here. Uh, one of the scriptures that I, I, I've come uh, become very fond of. Uh, can be found in Romans chapter eight, where it says that earth moans in expectation for the appearing of the sons of God, literally meaning that earth is waiting for you to come to a realization of who God has called you to be. And so why is earth moaning for this realization? Well, the reason is because earth needs what you have. And so God saw fit for you to be here. Uh, and in your being here, as you manifest or as you uh, begin to embody the kingdom, what ends up happening is, is that you, your very presence, your very dominion, what it does is that it begins to free up those in your environment. And so I want you and I hope that you have a better understanding of this relationship as it pertains to partnering with God. And so that's been the focus this year. We've talked about uh, some of the hindrances in that area. And I also hope that you have heard messages that bring uh, a greater level of empowerment as it pertains to partnering with God. Uh, we're going to dive right into the message. If you would turn with me to 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17. I'm going to do a little bit of reading tonight, but uh, we're not going to jump too too much on uh, around the, the Bible, I, I don't think, tonight. But uh, if you would, 1 Samuel 17, uh, we're going to pick right up at verse 31. Uh, and it reads, Now when the words which David spoke were heard, and uh, you got to go back a few verses to, to know what it was that David was saying, uh, but when the words that David uh, spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. And he's speaking about Goliath. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he would deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. So Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head. 
he also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to, to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had had and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. I'm going to stop right there. For, uh, for a message or for a thought tonight, uh, I want to use it's time to fight. It's time to fight. Uh, for the past two weeks, uh, we've been in a series called Manifesting Through Faith, or we've been talking about what it means to manifest things through faith. Uh, truthfully, uh, the more I think about it, uh, I don't think I, I know if there's any other way to manifest something other than by faith. Uh, I mean, when you think about manifesting, it, it simply means uh, to bring something forward that previously wasn't seen. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. I, I know that there probably are other ways to manifest. Uh, I just can't think of what any of them right now. But uh, in terms of what we've been discussing, uh, I want you to consider that there must first be a belief in the potential of what it is that you're doing. Uh, for anyone, uh, for example, for anyone who's had a job or currently works a job, uh, in essence, uh, you manifest a paycheck. Uh, you know, unless your employer goes out of business, whenever you work, you're working on the belief that over the course of time, uh, whether it be weekly, uh, every two weeks, once a month, that over that course of time, as a result of your work, you're going to get paid. Uh, now, you don't you don't get paid first. You work first and then you get paid. But in essence, the work that you're doing is the agreement that you believe that you're going to get something on the other end. Now, check this out. Your motivation for working that particular job, it might be the paycheck. Your mind is not fixated on wondering if the money is going to come. And that's what I'm trying to get at. The reason being is because there's a confidence in the employer's ability to pay. When God tells us something, when God tells you something, my first question is, are you confident enough to stick with what he has said until what he said becomes your reality? Just like the employer. See, the employer is making a promise that if you do this, you'll get this. And so we're working, you know, a lot of us uh, working 40 plus hours for the expectation of a check. But when it comes to the things of God, uh, is there an expectation that you will hold and have what God has said belongs to you? Uh, I've been asking God about, you know, why are we back in this conversation of faith? Uh, you know, I, I mean, you know, faith is something that, you know, it, it is the foundation of, of our uh, our belief system of our, our, our you know, as Christians. Uh, it is the, is, is a foundational uh, concept. And so, you know, we'll always have faith conversations. But, you know, I was like, God, it seems like we've talked about this quite a few times this year. Uh, and what I heard the Lord say is, is that there are some people wondering why it's not working for them. I said, OK, God, I, I got it. Um, see, I understand that. Faith is connected to every part of, of life, you know, what job you work or what relationships uh, do you develop? You know, what things should you pursue? See, I, I understand that those things are interconnected with faith because these are things that require us to ask ourselves, am I willing to commit? Uh, how much of myself am I willing co to commit to this until uh, what I believe about it is realized. See, if I'm in a relationship with somebody and I believe the best for that relationship, I'm going to give the best because I believe the best. And so that's a faith thing. I, I understand that in the human dynamics, people can make mistakes and, and sometimes people can disappoint you and, and I can disappoint them. But nevertheless, the hope is, is that our friendship will be strong enough. See, that's, that's, 
that's that's not a uh, a guarantee. You know, we can there could be a falling out, but the reality is is that I enter relationships with the 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 hope of the best. And so I understand that once again, faith is connected to all things. Uh, there's a scripture that I reference quite often, and uh, I'm actually going to read it. I'm not going to I'm not going to quote it right now. I'm going to read it. This is Romans once uh, 17, and it says, "For in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith." This is what I want you to hear. The implications of faith to faith suggest that you use what you have to get to where you want to go. I'll say that one more time. When we're saying from faith to faith, that's suggesting that you have used what you have. So I've used the 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 measure of faith and I'm getting ready to get into that. I've used my portion of faith. And as a result of me using what I currently have, I'm able to go beyond and experience the greater. And so that's the implication from faith to faith suggests that I once used what I have and now I've used it to the degree that I've obtained more. And that's exactly what we see in the story of David. See, here's the thing where we pick up in this particular story and, and, and for those uh, who are in the business uh, space and stuff, I would highly encourage you to read this first uh, Samuel 17 uh, in your own private time, because there uh, there's some great lessons as it pertains to risk, uh, le learning how to take risk, uh, learning how to consider the cost. Uh, you, you'll see all of that in, in this uh, 17th chapter of first Samuel. But what we pick up in this story and what we see is the king assumed that he wasn't equipped for the challenge. You know, he's he's already sizing David up. He's saying, hey, look, you you a kid. You're not ready for this. This guy that you talking about fighting, he's been he's been he's been a warrior since he was a kid. But, but here you are, a kid talking about you're ready to go fight him. And so the king was saying that you're not equipped for what it is that you said that you want to pursue. But here's the thing with with good intention, he he gives in to, to David because there's nobody else in the in the is, Israeli army willing to fight uh, Goliath. So he gave David uh, something he was inexperienced in using. It says that he gave him his armor. He gave him his sword. Uh, and so David tries it on. Uh, but what he understood is, is that uh, while the armor and the, the sword, those things may have worked for Saul. He wasn't in position to put confidence in something that he had never used before. However, his conviction was that what he was familiar with, those things he could get the same result, in which was to kill Goliath. Now, this is what I want you to hear. Based upon his experiences, because this is what David lays out, Based upon his experiences, uh, what he uh, what he understood was there was no difference between the lion. There's no difference between the bear. And, and now that he's getting ready to fight Goliath, in his eyes, there was no difference with Goliath either. See, the people made a distinction. When you go back in this chapter, the, the people are talking about how, how fearful they are fighting Goliath. So they made the distinction out of fear, but in David's eyes, he knew that it was God who allowed him to win in the situations that he previously should have not won. When he fought that bear, when he fought that lion, that's why he's giving those as examples. What he's saying is, is that I've been in situations, dangerous situations before. And here's the thing. God kept me in those situations so I have no reason to doubt God's ability of keeping me right now. What I will put before you all, uh, I know some of you all probably heard me say this. And for those who haven't, you're getting ready to hear me say it now. You are living the greatest demonstration of faith right now. And what I mean is, is that our faith, our belief uh, as Christians is, is based upon the 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 death, the sacrifice of someone we did not see die. So in essence, 
we preach Jesus crucified, but none of us were there to see it. Meaning that hypothetically, it, it could not have happened. Now we know it to have happened, but we don't know it because we've seen it. We know it because we believe it. And now out of that belief, we have been transformed. Uh, we have become this new creation. And so what I'm saying is, is that you're living your greatest demonstration of faith right now. So as it pertains to these other areas of faith, the question is, why does it become so difficult? If I'm, if I'm believing that someone I've never saw die for me, died for me, and that literally transforms my life, if I can believe that, then why do I struggle for believing if God is going to take care of my needs? The thing about David, he understood the importance of fighting with what he had developed an ability with. We talked about this two weeks ago uh, in Romans 12, uh, verse three, the word says that God gave us each a measure of faith. See, David used what he had, what he had to get what he believed. My question to you is, are you using what God has given you? See, that, that's, that's what this all really boils down to. Am I using, am I putting to work what God already gave me? See, the thing is, is that I can't expect you to do something with what I have not equipped you to get the job done with. God gave us each a measure because he understands that that measure is enough to get us started. The issue is, is that a lot of us are not getting started. Earlier, I mentioned that some people are wondering why it's not working. The question I want you to consider is, am I trying to use something that I have not developed? Because once again, we're talking about from faith to faith. Have I taken the first step with my faith to develop it so I get to a point where now I can believe greater when the next situation comes uh, comes before me? It's okay to acknowledge that you aren't there yet. Uh, I want to be mindful that I'm not preaching something that uh, people people give up even in the midst of hearing it. Uh, so it's okay to say, Hey, you know what? I'm not there yet. But the reality is, is that I hope that we're all progressing. We're steadily making progress towards the things that we're believing God for. The issue is, is that when we grow complacent in our faith, see, that becomes a problem when we're not growing in our faith. Each year, you should be able to mark steady progression as it pertains to the things that you are able to believe God for. If you're, if you're having a challenge believing God for a hundred dollars right now, then just start believing them for the, the increments of 10 until he, till you see it manifest enough that you say, you know what, I'm going to step out my, my faith. You know, if I can, the, the process is literally the same. So if I can believe him for this little bit, then certainly I can believe him for greater the next time around. Let me let me bring something to your attention before we we close up out of here. I want to say thank you to everybody who's joining us uh, both on Zoom as well as uh, on uh, social media. This is First uh, Samuel twenty one. I'm going to read verse nine. First Samuel twenty one and nine. It says, "So the priest said, the sw uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to go back to verse eight. And David said to Amalekek, is there not here on hand a spear or a sword? For I have brought neither my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. So the priest said, the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, there it is, wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you will, take that. Take it. For there is no other except that one. And David said, there is none like it. Give it to me. Jesus. The same David 
who couldn't walk in Saul's armor a couple of chapters earlier, eventually became the same David that carried the sword of Goliath. He was now skilled and able to carry the weapons of giants. What I'm telling you is, is that as wherever you're at in your measure of faith, as you work it, your faith is going to get stronger. And then what you end up finding is, is that the place that you're now at, you can look back and say, I remember a time when I couldn't even believe God for this little thing. But he demonstrated himself to such a degree that now I believe God for greater. It's, it's no longer a challenge for me. See, what we saw earlier is, is that David, he once struggled in, in, in walking around in the armor of, a, of, of, of a, a simple man. But he had risen to such a rank, he had gotten so proficient in warfare that now he's able to handle masterfully the weapons of a giant. And what I want to tell you is that in similar regard, as we grow in our faith, we'll move from that small stature to the stature of a giant. You don't have to wait to walk in, rev in a revelation. If, 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 if you can consider everything that we've been talking about over the course of, if you've been with us for a little over two and a half years now, you don't have to wait to walk in a revelation. See, you know, we're we're coming coming up on, on a new year here in a couple of months. And, and, and every new year, people have what's called New Year's resolutions. And, and, and so because it's a new year, there's this expectation that a new year, I'm going to do a new thing. But the reality is the moment that you have a revolution, uh, a revelation, you can make the resolution to begin to walk in that thing in that moment. See, we don't have to keep waiting for uh, the, these signs and these check marks and, you know, the, the thumbs up. The moment you get the revelation, start walking in it. See, the issue is, is that a revelation will come and we act like we don't know what to do with it. And that's like pretending not to know what was just explained to you. And see, that 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 opens up a whole new dynamic when now you become held accountable for what it is that you you know. You know, when we don't get to claim ignorance, because the reality is, is that you now have the revelation of a thing. Uh, I've shared this example with you before. I've heard stories and I imagine many of you have as well of millionaires who went bankrupt and were able to uh, turn it around relatively quickly and the next time around they actually had more money than they had previous to going bankrupt the reason why is they had a revelation of their money they had an understanding of what they could do and what they needed to do to get to where they wanted to go this is the last thing i'll share with you faith is the companion of possession faith is the companion of possession if you want it, do you believe it? Is what it really boils down to it. If you believe it, you'll have it. What you believe is what you have. See, those are those are faith things. If you believe that you're supposed to be poor, if you believe that you're poor, then you'll see poverty around you. If you believe that uh, you know, you can't be healthy, you can't get in the shape, then guess what? There's no motivation for you to get in shape. So, so what you just put, what you just pronounced is what you'll see yourself as having. This year, we've been talking about partnering with God. And what I want you to know, and I, what I want you to realize is that you are partnering with a, with God on a project called you. Y-O-U. Let that be your first project as it pertains to partnering with God, getting yourself situated, getting yourself in order, because as you do that, now you become the testimony for others. Fight the good fight of faith because you are worth it. So as it pertains to faith, the things that God is saying pertaining to me, I must be willing to fight that fight that good fight of faith. 
because I am worth it. And I hope that that is your confession. Listen, for those who are with us on YouTube uh, as well as Facebook, want to say thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, once again, we're here Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. I hope that this message was a blessing to you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you all next week. Take care, and God bless.